thanks for uh, thanks for attending here towards the end of the day. We've got a plenty of room, so you know, feel free to spread out here. Hopefully, we'll bring some people in as we uh, move along. So, uh, wanted to talk about RFID. It's always a, a topic of interest to people in retail, um, and and specifically wanted to hit on you know, you don't. Do you have to be a Walmart or a Macy's or someone to, to get the benefit? And the answer is really no. So we wanted to talk about what those benefits are uh, and how small and medium companies can, can get the benefit of RFID. Um, we see a lot from those big companies, and they tend to be you know, the early adopters, and, and they make a lot of noise when they do something. But it's not their size that allows them to derive benefit. It's, it's the, uh, the, the, the complexity of the SKUs they have. If you look at the, the categories that they're tagging, um, they're not high dollar things. Um, they're not high, necessarily high volume uh, SKUs. They're, they're complex SKUs. So the, the, the size, color, style uh, are very different, but they're very particular. If you take denim, for example, you've got the waist, you've got the length, you've got the cut, you've got the wash. And all those things are very important to the customer who's going to buy that. And if one of those things is off, I'm probably not going to buy the closest, the next closest thing. I'm probably going to walk out and go somewhere else. So an out of stock in a SKU like that, that has those characteristics, is a really bad thing because it's going to cost me that sale and probably cost me the sale of, of anything else I'm going to throw in the basket along the way. So as we talk about this, again, it's, it's not the size or the volume or the number of stores. It's what's in the store and what are the types of, uh, of, of categories and of SKUs you're going to use. Now, as I say that and talk about small and medium companies, we're going to talk about a little bit about some of the larger companies and what they're doing. Again, you know, they tend to be the early adopters. Uh, they tend to, to make a lot of noise when they do things. Um, and, and it, you know, it started with some of these large retailers, many, many more piloting, some that aren't actually saying anything about it just yet. Um, but what we're seeing now is also specialty retailers are coming on board. And I'm, again, I mentioned it's complexity of SKUs. Uh, it, it's not the size. Um, and, then, and then others are piloting as well. And you're starting to see the brand owners who were asked by those large retailers to tag the items that were going to those retailers to start tagging for their own, whether they're stores and factory outlets or wherever, because they're going to see those benefits in those stores as well. So whenever you talk about any technology, and RFID is, is just another technology. Um, I like the message earlier. It said that uh, social media is not the message, it's the vehicle. RFID is not the solution, it's the data handler for the solution, right? So you take a technology and you say, how do I help, how do I use it to help me run my business better? How do I eliminate touches? How do I automate things that used to be manual? How do I, how do I get rid of inaccuracies or errors? Uh, what's really important in, in most retail use cases is how do I reduce inventory levels? How do I reduce out of stocks? How do I reduce shrink? And a lot of other things that come along with that. And so if I can find the answers to those for a particular technology, then I'm going to find the benefit for me. And whenever you talk about this, is always visibility. Uh, there was a great quote uh, a few presentations before that said, uh, what was it, Lord Kelvin? It said, uh, you can't, you can't, uh, I'm going to forget it now. Uh, you, you can't change it if you can't measure it. But I'll add to that. You can't measure it if you can't locate it. You can't locate it if you can't identify it, and you can't identify it if you can't see it. So it all starts with, can I see this product in the right places to do something with it? An out of stock means the item that should have been here in this one place where a customer can pick it up and buy it, it's not here. Is it not here because I'm out of stock? Or much more likely, it's not here because someone picked it up and moved it somewhere else. Someone bought one and it hasn't been replenished. But for some reason, I didn't see that happen. So I got to figure out where do I get that visibility? Where do I see those events occur that allow me to replenish, that allow me to go take it from where it's not supposed to be over in the t-shirt area and bring it over to the denim area? All right, and how often do I need to see these, uh, these activities occur? You know, is it the motion? Is it just from time to time? I need to, to do something to give me that visibility? So you kind of make the decision on what do I need to do? Where do I need to see these things? And from there, you can choose the technology that's going to give you that, that visibility. As you go up this, uh, I'm going to try these both sides equally. Uh, as you go up the, uh, the, the slant here, you get much richer data. What do I mean by that? Uh, down at the bottom with barcodes, you know what something is. As you go further up, you know where it is. You might know where it is to an XY coordinate if you're using active RFID. You might know how it is if you have sensors, temperature, uh, things like that. But where on this continuum do you need to be to do good things with the information to make the right business decision? And so what we're going to talk about is we're going to compare 
barcodes and passive RFID and help you understand, all right, where are the, where are the points and where are the use cases and, and what is the visibility I get that allows me to, to get this, this information that I need. So when you compare the two, um, there's some, some very, very important differences. Uh, the first one is barcode requires line of sight. I'm going to see a barcode to scan a barcode. Very hard to automate that. RFID, you can see through things. If you had a chance to see our demo uh, just outside, we had a, we had a, uh, a bowl of 83 uh, little, little plastic balls in there. I didn't have to see all of them at one time to do it. I just scanned, and I got them all in a second or two. That leads us to the second one. Barcodes are one at a time. I have to scan one, and then the other, and then the next one. That takes forever. What we're going to talk about in subsequent slides is labor savings. Because you can get the visibility you need most of the time with barcodes, but it takes way too much time and way too much labor to do it. With RFID, I can get rid of that line of sight, so I can see, I can see genes behind genes behind genes, but I can also do that very quickly. I don't have to see the actual barcode either. And the readers today can read hundreds, if not thousands, of tags at one time. So you're doing this really quickly. Uh, the third one is barcodes are not necessarily unique. SKU A is SKU A is SKU A every time. The UPC for that one is always the same. What you're doing with RFID is you're adding a serial number to the end, essentially, of that UPC. That means that SKU A123 is different from SKU A124, is different from SKU A125. That allows me to count, like I talked about. It also just allows me to know, have I seen this particular item before? Where has it gone? Was it sold if it comes back? If I see it at a returns desk? Do I know that that particular item was sold, or was it lost and now has come back? Is it a dead goldfish, or a supposed dead goldfish, if you were in one of the previous ones? Um, the top three really lead you to that fifth one there, where barcodes, it's, it's hard to automate, especially when you look at a, uh, in, in a retail store. You know, it, it's, it's still that one-to-one. -one. You're still having to do a lot, throw a lot of, of, of manpower at it. Whereas with RFID, the top three things allow you to be uh, much more automated and do things much faster and much easier. And those are really the main ones there. So when we talk about RFID, uh, it's, it's been, I've been doing this for, for over 10 years now, and, and before 08, it was really, how, how do you spell RFID? Um, that was our joke back then. It's, it's, we've been really high-level comedy. Um, but it's like, what, what is this thing? Tell me about it. How does it work? What is, a, what is an RFID chip? And then it moves to, OK, I kind of know what it is, but can I trust it, right? Uh, but we've gotten to really, really more interesting conversations in the last several years with, OK, I know what it is. I know I can trust it. How do I use it? What can I do with it that gives me visibility that I don't have with barcodes or what other, other technology that I'm using? And that's a lot more fun to talk about than what is this RFID thing, right? Uh, but when you're having those conversations, the same things apply going back to Technology ABC. Well, technology RFID, let's see what it can do to uh, control cost, to, to uh, be better with inventory, uh, to, to lower that safety stock that I've got. So w let's talk about inventory in particular. Um, with barcodes, most retailers are going to do a cycle count or a full-scale inventory once a year, maybe twice a year. And the reason it's only done that infrequently is because it takes so long to do. You're either pulling everybody in on a weekend, you're closing down, you're doing it overnight, but everybody comes in, you order a bunch of pizza, a bunch of beer, and you scan, 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 right? And you do that because it, it's so hard to do. But, but once you do it, you've got this great inventory accuracy until tomorrow, and then until Tuesday. And then from there, there on down, you are dropping down. And all of these things on the right are all of the bad things that happen when your physical inventory is different from what you have in your system. Uh, and you can read all of those. But the way that RFID gives you that automation, I can take these inventory counts and these cycle counts much more frequently and much more easily. So instead of having this, this drop down in the six months or 12 months between the times that I do a physical inventory, I'm doing it once a week, maybe twice a week. So that dip is almost none. You can see where, one of my subsequent slides, you're going to go from maybe you're somewhere in the 60s with your inventory accuracy. You're going to get to the high 90s with RFID because you can, you can do these cycle counts much more quickly. So what are the benefits of being able to do that? Other than having a nice flat line on your inventory accuracy grid, you're going to see sales lift. If it's not out of stock, you can sell it. If you sell that one, you replenish it when you need to, you'll sell the next one, right? Uh, you can reduce your inventory. 
So you don't have the safety stocks. Uh, you don't necessarily maybe have as many of SKU A on the floor because you're seeing that I can replenish it quickly enough. You can see the velocity of the different ones. This one moves faster than the other. I need to pay attention. You might even end up with a bigger number of SKUs on the floor because if I don't need 10 of SKU A, I can put SKU B and SKU C in the space where I took out some of SKU A. Now I've got more things on the store to sell, on the floor to sell. Uh, and then it enables omni-channel. Um, that's a really hot topic these days. Um, and, uh, and RFID is, is really important to that, and I'll tell you why. Um, there's a quote from, uh, I never know if I'm saying his name right, uh, it, it's Pete Sash, he's the uh, chief stores officer uh, at Macy's, and they were asking him about competing with Amazon. You know, Amazon has all these distribution centers everywhere, and they're really highly automated. And he said, look, we've been building distribution centers for 150 years, we just call them stores. The thing that Omnichannel is doing is it's taking a store, whether it's the back room, the floor, or both, and making essentially warehouse locations out of them, right? Because I have to know what's in the back room of every store. I may have to know what's on the floor of every store so that I can fulfill in all these different ways that Omnichannel requires, right? But if I'm doing that, I really have to have that visibility. If I don't, then the worst thing you can do, or one of the worst things you can do, is have somebody buy something online. You tell them it's in the closest store. They go to that store and, oh no, it's not here. That's a really unhappy customer, right? So you've got to know what's in the stores. And our RFID is allowing you the, the level of visibility, the level of accuracy to really go into these omni-channel applications. So what are the use cases? How do you use it most commonly in retail? The first one's cycle count. I think I've said it 35 times already. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you're taking a reader, such as is pictured there and uh, is in our booth for another 10 or 12 minutes after my talk maybe. Um, and you're just, we'll, we'll show a video uh, going forward here, and you'll see, you just take inventory by just kind of painting, walking up and down. Great way to do a cycle count. Uh, display compliance is what we're seeing, whether it's shoes or handbags or whatever. If I have to have one representative of every SKU I have available for sale, and I have to make sure that they're out there, or else obviously they're not gonna be sold, I need to make sure I'm compliant. This is a great way to take that inventory and make sure you're doing the audit to see that each each, one of each handbag, one of each pairs of shoes is out there and, and available for customers to see and to ask for. And then item location. Um, if someone says, I want to find this, if I want to find SKU A, where is it? Well, it may take a long time for an associate to find SKU A uh, if they just kind of have an idea of where it ought to be. With RFID, uh, you can punch in a single item and it, it's like a Geiger counter. It'll start beeping. You get close to it, it beeps faster. So it's really a lot easier to go find something, especially if it's not where it should have been, right? If there's a, a pair, of, pair of jeans over with the basics, uh, you can go find it a lot more quickly than you would if you didn't have that and you were just going to look for it. So with these use cases, what are some of the benefits you get? Inventory accuracy, I, I've hit on this before mid-60s to high 90s. That's gonna make a difference for you immediately. The labor savings we talked about, you're gonna be able to get this accuracy without just throwing a bunch of labor, a bunch of people with handhelds uh, uh, in there. And you're gonna save the cost there as well. Um, we talked about location, uh, locating a product and the reduction in time it takes to do that. Um, talked about out of stocks. And then every, all of that leads to sales increases. Um, and if you, have, uh, if you have brand owners that are coming through your stores, that leads to increases for them too. So everybody's happy when you start to sell more. Uh, a case study in particular, American Apparel. 12,000 SKUs on the floor, one item per SKU. That's begging to be out of stock, right? You sell one and you're out of stock immediately. They do manual replenishment and that required two barcode scanning physical inventories per week. That's an awful lot of labor, 240 hours per month to get that done. So again, you can get the visibility with another technology. You can do this with barcodes, but the labor is essentially cost prohibitive. So RFID is a technology that allows you to do both with a reasonable amount of labor. Even when they did the barcode physical counts, they were still missing items. There still were inaccuracies and errors when they did that. So there's a problem here. So how did they solve this problem? Worked with a partner of Zebras called ExtraPrize uh, that they uh, put in 250 stores. They're using handhelds and ExtraPrize software and they're doing cycle counts. Uh, you can see there's a high volume of, uh, of transactions. They've been live for a while now, tagging in the distribution center. Um, 
And uh, so they're watching everything. They're able to take those cycle counts. And what did they see? Sales were up 14% on average. That's a big number. Even for a small retailer, that's a big number. You're not going to sneeze at that, right? And the labor there went down. Again, you're, you're reducing labor, you're increasing accuracy, and a four and a half month return on investment there, that's really fast. Most people are going to see those things and be pretty interested in how to do that. Uh, this is an eye chart. If anyone can read it, raise their hand. You don't have to read it, please don't even try. What's highlighted there says RFID, it's a magic four letters. The reason I'm putting this here is this is their, uh, their analyst call. This is their, their SEC form. When you're putting a technology inside your SEC forms and you're talking to analysts about it, that means you're bought in. That means you see a benefit and you're willing to talk about it and you want to say, this is something we're doing. And you can see some of the quotes. They're saying, this is, this is moving the needle for us. Uh, and this comes from the C-suite, right? Uh, you don't typically have uh, somebody, uh, I don't know, my level, talking to analysts on an earnings call, right? You have the top guys in the company doing that, and when they're talking about a technology, that means it's really hitting the bottom line. It's really doing something for them. So that's why I put this on here. So now, a quick video. I don't have sound, so uh, I'm going to Vanna White it and kind of talk you through it. Um, it's going to show uh, a picture of kind of what we've been looking at. All the things we've talked about here, all the benefits of RFID. Um, reducing inventory, adding different types of inventory there so you have a bigger variety in there. Uh, you're able to, uh, to receive, uh, you're able to take cycle counts, you do it much more quickly. Uh, it says in minutes, not hours. It's, it's a whole lot faster. We talked about omni-channel with the different ways, and visibility is required for that. It's not all going to be reading, I promise. We're going to have pretty pictures and moving things quick. Clarity is the Exerprise product uh, that, that runs all of this. In the distribution center, you'll see the little white antennas. They're watching uh, this pallet come through and, and counting everything it sees inside the boxes. Remember, no line of sight. Uh, if you want to do it with a handheld, you're seeing that as well. You see how quickly it just counts things. And you'll see a very similar thing inside the store when we take an inventory. In the back room, if you want to receive into the back room, you can go to a terminal. You just set the box down on a reader. So it's, it's shooting RF up into the box and showing you everything that's in that box. If you need to uh, print a tag or reprint a tag, there's a fantastically beautiful printer there that's an option for you. Uh, that would be a zebra printer, absolutely, yeah. And I actually know where you can get those. So here's going to be a picture of doing the cycle count in the store, and you'll see how quickly it can be done just by kind of walking around and painting the fence. If we had sounds, you'd hear all the great beeps again at our table, you can see that. Um, so now you have someone come in and say, I saw this online, where is it? Let's go find it. Again, if you had to go find it by yourself, you know where it probably should have been, but if it's not there, you're not sure. So she takes it, she inputs the item, and she's scanning and, and beep, 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 she tells it's right there. That's the guide to your counter option. So you're finding things much more quickly there. In the same way, if you want to find something that's on the store floor, you're going to do essentially the same thing. Input skew information, tell it to go find it, and use RFID to go find it. I think she probably could have seen that on her own, but. <laughs> Integrated well with Retail Pro. What you can't see here is there's a reader under the, uh, under the table there, so it's seeing what has been brought to the cash wrap, and it's automatically reading that, saying, I see four items, is that correct? You say yes, and that's your point of sale integration that's there. That can immediately decrement your inventory, call for replenishment if you need to, everything's out the door. SML is the company that, that uh, owns Extra Price. And they make RFID tags as well. So you're at you're you're controlling your inventory. You're adding sales. Um, one, th one thing I didn't mention about uh, about the American Apparel uh, use case is that um, they didn't plan to address shrink. They're like, we're going to do this inventory control thing. We're going to see how it goes. But they reduced shrink by some big number, 50 percent or something, 70 percent internal shrink. And it wasn't because they did something. It wasn't because they put readers 
you know, at the back room or on the windows watching for people. It's when you tag everything, when you show that there's value to everything, your associates understand, oh, there's value in this. Maybe some of the things I was doing before, I'm not going to do anymore. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like you put a big anti-theft tag on a product, even if it's not turned on, people will say, oh, okay, I get it. So American Apparel saw a 70% reduction in internal shrink, and they weren't even really trying to, to reduce shrink. It just happened because they're showing that value there. Oh, this loop, didn't it? You want to see it again? We, have, we got time. <laughs> So, as you start thinking about where can I use RFID, and I should have done this in a previous slide, but as you're looking at the ROI, a lot of people say ROI, everybody, everybody says, oh, what a great thing, but how do you actually get there, right? How do I take the cost of a system and compare it to my benefit? So consider how many SKUs are on the floor of an actual store, what those SKUs cost, consider uh, cost per hour of the associate's time, and then consider all the things we've talked about, right? Um, if I can reduce shrink, if I can reduce associate's time searching for something when they could be on the floor selling, if I can use an uplift in sales, if I can, if I can turn product more quickly, you can add value. Knowing, knowing time, knowing dollars and cents, you can add that benefit up. Um, and then you look at the cost of the system, the hardware, the software, the services, the tags, compare the two. Um, people always ask, and it's always going to be a topic of conversation, how much does the tag cost? You know, oh, oh my god, that's way too expensive. I'm never going to find an ROI if a tag costs X. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar, ten cents, or two cents, that's going to happen. But if you look at what people are tagging today, I've mentioned denim a lot, and denim's a reasonably high dollar product, but uh, intimates, basics, I mean, t-shirts, underwear, and socks are being tagged. Those are not necessarily high dollar items, but again, they're complex SKUs, they're typically fast moving SKUs, and they have the characteristics that mean if I'm out of stock in these, I'm gonna lose a sale, and this is gonna cost me. So even these smaller dollar items, it, it pays back to tag them with an RFID tag that is, is now and always will be more expensive than a barcode. The benefit's there, it doesn't matter what it costs. Ballpark today, I'm telling people 10 cents for a simple disposable tag. If you want to buy 10 million of them, it's probably going to be a little, little less than that. But that's a good uh, kind of rule of thumb cost there. So as you're looking into it a little more into the weeds here, uh, you know, what are the processes that I know I'm lacking that visibility? I know I've got problems. I know I've got things that need to be corrected. Can I look at this technology and the benefits and the traits that it has that barcodes don't? Where can I get that low-hanging fruit? You don't have to light up everything. A lot of people say, I want to push a button and see where everything I've got in every store is in every DC. It's not the way to start. Pick some low-hanging fruit. Know where a, a painful problem is. Know where, if I have visibility, I can solve that painful problem. Let's start there and we can grow, right? Uh, and then you've got to measure it. Back to Lord Kelvin. If you see it and you identify it and locate it, then you can measure it and then you can do something about it, right? So, I have to know what success means. Reading a tag is not success. Running a pilot is not success. What is the benefit that's going to say, all right, it's a green light? Make sure to include everybody, all different departments in that conversation. If you just do store ops and you don't include IT, if you don't include finance, you're going to hit some roadblocks down the way. I've seen plenty of projects that store ops is all in, IT had no idea what was going on, and uh, we, we can't do this. We have this list of things to do. You're not on the list, sorry. Bring everybody in and have them at the table early so everybody has buy-in. Um, the third one, where are you going to tag the product, right? This whole, the whole idea here is let's grease the wheels in the supply chain. Let's automate things as best we can. Oh, wait a minute, I have to touch and tag everything. So let's be as, as least disruptive as possible in tagging. If there's a place where I'm already touching the product, Display compliance is easy. I'm already taking shoes and handbags out of a box and put them on the floor. I'm just going to change my barcode tagging process to an RFID tagging process, and it's going to be pretty transparent. But if that's not the case, where can I do it to have the least bad impact on my processes? Can I work with my trading partners to do that as well? So those are some of the kind of things to start thinking about as you, as you move into this. And I think that's it for me. Um, questions? Thanks. Yes. How often do you work with retail or both sense of if you use it for doing good thing, good sounds process? And do you have to duplicate your inventory within your application? 
So basic question is how integrated is it into Retail Pro? Can you use it for goods in, goods out? How many times do you have to trade information back and forth, right? So um, the integration can be done at multiple points, right? But the basic idea is, I mentioned that RFID is serialized and UPCs are not, right? So I'm gonna do my counts, I'm gonna do what I need to do, and then I have some business information, right? Uh, we need to replenish now. Or your inventory is this. Pass that in a flat file, back to Retail Pro, and I item master, update that. Retail Pro can see it. Um, our friends at Xterprise have gone all the way to the point of sale. You saw in the video where the point of sale had a splash screen, and RFID is actually feeding in as if it were keyboard strokes. So that kind of, kind of transparently goes straight into the system. So there are a couple of different touch points that you can, you can talk about. Yes, sir. Is, oh. With security. So, is that me? Uh, the answer is yes. Most of the times you don't start there. Um, but if you can use it to update your point of sale, then you know that an item, again, a, a serialized item was sold or not sold. And then if you see it leaving the door, you can know if it's sold or not sold. Right? Um, that's usually a phase two or phase three a lot of times. You start with that cycle count, I mentioned the low hanging fruit, uh, because you have to immediately do that update. And then also you just have to know if I'm seeing something at the door, am I seeing it walk through the door or am I seeing a, a, a rack that's right beside the door? But, but you can't do that with the, the sold or non-sold information. Um, is this solution available in version nine? I saw version eight on the screen. Right. Yes, we just had a picture of version eight. But, but yeah, version eight and version nine, it is available. We've, uh, we've uh, again, our friends at Extraprise have, have done several implementations and they are, they are touching both versions. Sure, come on, dude, keep my mic hot. Uh, so, uh, it sounds awfully complicated to me. I wonder, have you ever thought of simplifying it and having sort of a canned package that might work for somebody to get started and be really affordable? Sounds like a very educated question. Um, Strange you should ask, but yes, we have. Um, so we've been working with, again, Xterprise and, and, and Mike at Retail Pro to let's create a bundle. Let's create something that allows retailers to get started at low cost, low, uh, low like a learning curve, something that's essentially out of the box. I've got a handheld, I've got some software behind it, I've got some tags, let's go count stuff on the store. And can I do it at a price that's not going to drop any jaws? And, um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know if I want to throw anything like that out. I'll leave it to you to, to pass information about that. But, uh, but yeah, so you can get started. There is, uh, we, we've been working on a, a bundle that you can say, uh, let's try this. Let's get, get moving and, and try a store, compare that store to other stores and see the benefit that you get. Yes. Do you know if we had a number of items? I don't think there was specific, a specific it was It wasn't targeted that it's, way. It's more a store instance? Yeah, it was, yeah. The, the idea was that, um, again, trying to get, kind of get your feet wet. So, so it was a reader, I believe there was a printer, a tag printer, a mm -hmm. certain number of tags, and the software license per store. So we kind of brought it down to that level, if that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, if, I mean, I can't twenty thousand tags or something. I can't remember. We some, something along. Yeah, it was it was sort of a you know just to try to have a fixed price. We had to have a fixed number of tags, so it was just sort of an arbitrary number. And obviously, we could do anything, you know, that you wanted to. Yeah, do. I mean, tags are readily available, so if needed. But yeah, I mean, that's that's something uh, offline we can talk through it or whatever. Thank you for the question. So uh, the question is, uh, how small can you get? Is there something suitable for jewelry? Uh, and absolutely, what we're seeing is, you know, the, the kind of um, the, the rat tail flag tags on jewelry that have, you know, less than an inch square area on them. Um, you're seeing tags that are that small. Um, it's, it's like a radio antenna. You know, the bigger the radio, the, the longer the read range. So that does reduce it. But oftentimes in jewelry applications, you don't need 15 feet. A few feet will work for you. But those do exist. Um, back to kind of the slide that said after about 2010, we've been having much more interesting discussions. Uh, part of that is the technology is maturing and it's getting very specific to use cases and to products. So we've got jewelry tags, 
We've got uh, denim specific tags. We've got the boxed electronic specific tags. We have tire. So there's there's a lot of tags that are made for specific use cases. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So you've got you've got uh, you've got your hang tags. You've got your just normal UPC labels. You've got jewelry tags. There's there's plenty of them out there. I'm gonna try not to play. I highly recommend that you pop over to their booth real quick because one of the things that just wows me is they've got these little, they're, what are they, two and a half inches long, maybe five eighths an inch yeah, wide yeah, or whatever, something, something like that. And it just looks like your classic, you know, Avery label. And it's, and it's an RFID tag. It's just very, and they're, you know, they're a dime. It's very cool. And, they're, and, they're, and the Zebra printer programs, programs them on the fly, right? It's, it's very cool. Ideally, yes. Some people get started to where it's a dual system. I'm just going to buy some pre-printed tags because that kind of reduces the hardware on the, on the upfront. Um, but that doesn't scale. Uh, ideally, what you want is what we call an integrated tag. So it looks like your barcode tag today, but there's also RFID in it. And as Mike said, the Zebra printer, or any RFID printer, but probably a Zebra printer, is going to print and encode at the same time. And so to your users, it feels like they're doing what they've always been doing. For one more quick one, if anybody's got one. All right. Thanks a lot, right. McLeod. Appreciate it.